was it actually called that or was it called the hard r league i think it was called the i don't i don't <laughs> think it was that i highly don't think it was that don't get me wrong i think people you know people i think people, people called, called i that. think people I'm, probably called it that I'm, you know i'm 100 percent sure of it people were much worse so they should say it on the commercial <laughs> no <laughs> Hi guys, welcome to the Joystick Show, episode 186. That we've done that many episodes. Yeah, of it's this your shit. favorite internet dads, Robert Rosario and Dylan Diaz. We don't have kids, but you, you know, know you're, you're our, our kids. kids exactly. You're... We have a we have alliterated names. We're yeah. like comic book characters. You know, we're like best friends in an urban city that go to high school with each other. But then, like as soon as the bell rings, we put on our cool superhero costumes and we fight crime in our inner city. I kind of don't like that idea. It sounds like a lot of work. Sounds like more work than doing a podcast weekly. Well, the reality of the situation, Dylan, is when you're gifted with abilities like that and then bad things happen, they happen when you don't step in to, to solve the bad thing. So it becomes your responsibility, which, of course, comes with great power. Uh, if you want to know what we're talking about, it's here. It's not anything we just opened. Yeah, I don't know what any of that was. Uh, um, you know, <laughs> like this shit. Yeah. Uh, don't become a superhero for sure. Maybe subscribe if you want to, uh, you nice. don't, you don't have to, but it'd be and, pretty cool. Uh, just, just sit back, relax, kick off the <clears throat> socks if possible. And, uh, oh, yeah, take most of your clothes off. Honestly, I, I don't know about that one, but take off a moderate amount of clothing mm -hmm. and get ready for the joystick show episode 180. Oops, sorry we kind of we're kind of setting this up like it's gonna be the hype shit as ever. if we have a plan as if there's we, no plan there's as if we, plan. we we have a segment like we're, it's we're, two we're, of us like there's some episodes where it's like we have a segment joey has something we have like a 15 minute discussion that actually turns into like a pretty good like yeah, discourse right. uh none of that today nope we're gonna uh, fucking... so i feel like we're just gonna go back and forth with stories it's gonna be one of those episodes we're gonna see right? yeah right for yeah. sure it's been a yeah. while but you know yeah so I'm gonna I'm gonna start with something I've done this week. Uh oh. Are you ready? Are you ready to hear about what I've done I'm this ready. week? <clears throat> yeah. So I was gonna start it with one thing that was pretty important, uh, but I'll save it until later. Okay. Because I don't think it's important right now. All right. And I'll start with what I did yesterday. So me and my girlfriend yesterday we're hanging out in Williamsburg, right? Late at night, uh, went uh, got some food, right? Mm -hmm. Went to a place called Kawa House as well okay after of, getting uh, after getting noodles is this a restaurant this was this was a coffee shop coffee after getting shop, okay. chinese food got you john gotcha. famous foods noodles right after that right um we decided hey there's a place it's called pete's candy store in williamsburg yeah i saw you post this on like that yes on story so this is a uh music venue in quotes uh so it's a bar and in the back they have a little cute like like 15 person 20 person seating for like an intimate concert so we go there the concert's about to start and it's a guy who's like actually filming right he's like has like a whole camera crew like he, has a legit, a, uh, he has a guy with headphones yeah, with like, yeah. and it's an actual like, like recorded crew, production yeah. yeah 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 and even though one of them is the guy at the place yeah, yeah. and then the other one is uh you still know, it's like a, a production yeah, going of on. course and he's like a folk singer from brooklyn his name was like alex or adam Maybe maybe I'll remember his name so you could throw okay. him up. But he was actually a really talented guitarist. He was a folk singer and guitarist. His voice, eh. But when you're a folk singer, it really doesn't matter, right? You have the heart for it, right? It sounds really good. Uh, he goes up for about 45 minutes, does pretty well, uh, climbs off stage. Because when he stands up, you realize this guy's like 6'6", six, six, and you're mm -hmm. like, oh, shit, what the fuck? This is like a tiny venue. Anyways, that's not why I'm talking about this. I'm talking about this is because the second act after this actually really good folk guy was two people who should never be allowed to step on a stage ever. Okay. And I hope they're, you guys, they're not watching. And I know they're not watching because, uh -huh. you know, why would these people yeah, in Brooklyn yeah. be watching? Uh, but I do not mean to be mean to these people. And this was a free concert too. This is free. You yeah. don't gotta pay. We gotcha. tip. We tipped after the first guy because he was really good. Uh, but this was a uh, indie music project called C and Me. Uh, okay. Boyfriend and girlfriend combo. Uh -huh. One is C. The other, the other is, is me. me. Uh, <laughs> so the best way I can describe these people is like, okay, imagine like they're not here right now. So again, I won't speak badly of them. Yeah. But Joey and his girlfriend. Okay. Imagine them too, because they, you know, they gave off those vibes. Okay. But instead of goth, they were hipsters. Okay. And they had a terrible, terrible, terrible indie rock band. Oof. 
And uh, so they get up on stage and they're just like, hey, guys, how's it going? This is our song. It's called Lola. <laughs> And he's just like jamming out on this Stratocaster, uh-huh. like stroke style. Yeah. And he's just like, Lola, why don't you love me like women do? And it's like, though, it was like weird vibes all the way. And we were like, what the fuck was this? And I was like, oh, that was about our cat. What the fuck? Next song, this is called Wild Horse. And then they proceed to sing a five minute epic song about the horses <laughs> in Central Park. Okay. Like, Wild Horse running free. What the fuck? Wow, the horse. And the girl the guy is like actually singing. The girl is not fucking singing. Uh-huh. She's like speak talking it. Okay. Like, yeah, like run full- free. <laughs> Be strong. She's ad libbing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But she's like, she thinks she's singing. Peaceful you know what I mean? Ad libbing. I dig it. And after every song, everyone's like, ah. <laughs> and I look at my girlfriend's face, who just is just like turned. Turn- it's like it, it, it was cr- it was cringe. That turned into Robert De Niro. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, that's the face she was giving. And then after it, it was like, all right, this is called, uh, this is, I forgot the name, but it was like Salty Starfish. I was like, another fucking animal. And every song, I was like, by like the fifth song, I was like, is this supposed to be this? The song's I, called I, Blue Moon Jellyfish. Yeah, yeah, because I'm sitting there and I think, like, like, their friends are laughing. But I think they're just like, oh, our friend's on stage. Like, I'm laughing because, like, this is fucking hysterical. And my girlfriend's having a terrible time. Yeah. So I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on? So immediately, I'm like, after the song, we're like, oh, uh, And my girlfriend was just like, mm-hmm. Yeah. And we go. And it was just like, we were like, and she was like, what the fuck? I'm like, I know. Wow. Yeah. And then today, I went to the car show, Javits Center. Yeah. You know, uh, another travesty. Because, like, there was, like, eight brands there. Like, eight different... Eight eight. different car makes. Like, maybe ten. That's it. Did you tell Jose about this? I did not. I didn't even discuss it with him. I was going to discuss it with him upstairs. Because that's how much of a travesty it was. That's not why it was a travesty. A travesty was the night before yeah, yeah. with C and me. So it sounds like you just had like a, a mediocre adventure. And the thing weekend. is, is that like, I don't know. Not, not, not like this happens a lot when I go out on the weekends. So now I'm like, it's like my life is a movie. My life is a, is a pretty annoying movie. Your life is like a TV movie. My life is like fucking, I don't know, like an offbeat comedy. <laughs> Your life is a Hallmark movie. My, my life is like fucking, uh, I don't know. Parks and Rec. I don't know. <laughs> My life is a Pixar short. My life is a knickknack. I'm tired. Knack? I'm smacked as fuck, too. If it's not apparent, I'm on four hours of sleep. Mm-hmm. I guess that's a, a decent segue. It is a pretty good segue, because like Bobby was telling me. He's like, oh, I, don't, I didn't do anything. I've been sleeping in a hole for the past couple months maybe three four months this uh, is kind of like me because my bed was also fucked yeah. up for a bit and then i got a new bed and i was like damn my life is to, to so much better yeah to explain i had one of those beds that had like the wood slats you know that you had to put the mattress on top of it had like a it had like a pallet yeah kind of exactly but after years of uh <laughs> good old wear and tear on that bed it's also it was also an overstock.com bed so it was probably made by like children <laughs> so either way it's not even lots it, yeah it, it was it was it was just not real real stably put mm-hmm. not even wayfair guys and uh fucking long story short all of the wood slats fell out on one side so if you were to accidentally roll in your sleep to one side the mattress would tip over and you would literally fall into a hole in your bed mm-hmm. uh i'm very happy to say that in very like close recency, I meant we we went out to buy a new bed and mattress yesterday, and I got the mattress today. So uh-huh. I finally am gonna be able to get like a great night's sleep in my brand new mattress. However, yeah, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but I am not the first person to get a good rest in my own fucking new multi thousand dollar bed, which I'm a little. I, and that's the thing. I don't know why I'm peeved about it, but I'm peeved about Bobby, it. Bobby, you know I'm what? Upset about it. Bobby, it makes a lot of sense. But the fact that it's like. An and ins- then you think of who broke my bed in the first place. But it, yeah, I think that's the core part of it. Yeah. And then on top of that, it's just like this insistent, like, 
damn, this is going to eat away at me until I sleep in this bed. You know what okay. I mean? So now it's there. And, you know and, gonna... ge- and guess who's in your fucking bed right now? You know what I, I mean? I was literally like... about to say, we left and Jose was on my desk playing Call of Duty. And I know that as soon as we came down here, he's when he went, fuck you, Bobby. And he went right into my bed yeah. and he's sleeping in there again. Mm-hmm. So long story short, Jose... Uh... Twice. Now, now, it's not only one person. Now, two separate people have s- sat in your bed. Yeah, yeah. And now... And my girlfriend, too. So three different people sat in your bed. What's up with that? And one of them slept twice. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. 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 Probably mm-hmm. three times by the time we're done with this fucking podcast. I, I I, if it's like 20 minute naps, I don't know how we count that. But, but. regardless, uh, I feel, I feel, you know, I feel, uh, what's the word? I feel violated. Yeah. That's what it is. You know, I feel like he took something from me. I'm going to try to sleep tonight and I'm just going to be tossing and turning because now I know that my bed just wasn't, well, I, I wasn't his first. I wasn't his first. It sucks. But uh, I'm happy Jose enjoys it. As he says, uh, as he says, bro, you got a good bed for us. Just makes me even more upset. But uh, I'm glad he's able to enjoy it while I'm not. Mm-hmm. And I'm hoping I'm able to get some good fucking sleep tonight. And not be mad about it. So that it. next episode of The Joystick Show, I'm super wacky and funny. <laughs> I feel like you're never like that, though. I'm not. No, I'm, not really. I'm not always super wacky and funny, Dylan. Oh, my <laughs> oh. God. Whoa. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Time this, to segue it into my next thing. Can you, can you do that zoom in? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? Like the Batman one. Yeah. Like, exactly. Exactly. Yeah, got you. Exactly. So fucking wound. love giving myself different, more fucking work. Of course. Um, no, I was, I was going to bring it into another random thing that I learned about, and I wanted to see if you knew about it. Okay. And I'm hoping you say no so that it makes this more satisfying. But if you say yes, I'm still going to explain it to you as if you don't know what it's about. And then, you <clears> know. <throat> Do you know what Nasubi is? Or who Nasubi is? Mm, explain. I'm gonna show you a picture. Is this the is this the little doll the little thing? No. This is Nasubi. Oh. So do you know about that man's story? I do not know his story, but I know the I know that that meme. Yeah, I know picture. the meme and the photos. I've seen him several times in meme culture. So I learned about the story behind the meme and behind that man, and it has to be one of the craziest fucking stories I've heard in a long time. Okay. So I found out that there's a show that used to air in Japan. Oh, the the sweepstakes. Yep. Yeah. And I don't know the name of the show, oh. but there it is. It's one of those long Japanese titles. I think it translates to some. Something like young man don't do that or something like that and in the show they get a bunch of young practically like un uh, unknown comedians in japan to essentially take a lottery for the opportunity to win the chance of essentially being tortured as part of like this crazy television experiment but it gives them some sort of exposure right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah so yeah, yeah. the most famous occurrence so it's with- like it's a basically it's basically like imagine if like I don't even have a comparable, but imagine just like, you know, uh, you're signing yourself up for for something that isn't good, but you're like, oh, I'm going to be on TV. Exactly. So homie won the lottery to be on this stupid fucking science experiment only to find out that by winning the lottery, he was subjecting himself to essentially a year's worth of torture where he was stripped naked without any clothing or food for that matter. And was only given an apartment with lights and water, and mm-hmm. was basically told that anything. Basic, yeah, he had yeah he had food, running water, and that was nothing it. else. And all everything just, that he just, was uh, allowed yeah, to use kitchen. to survive, he had to win as part of magazine sweepstakes. Mm-hmm. So if he wanted food, he had to try to win rice in the sweepstakes. Mm-hmm. And part of the challenge was if he wanted to leave the room. He had to make uh, one million yen, mm-hmm. which I think at the time equi- was equivalent to about eight thousand U.S. dollars, mm-hmm. right? Uh, so over the course of the year, you know, people tuned into this television show where every like I want to say Friday night or something like that, they mm-hmm. would air like an hour or so of you know worth of what he was doing in the apartment, and it was like this big weekly prime time of thing course, to yeah, check in huge. on Nasubi. And real quick to go on to that, I forget his real name. He has an actual name. It's not Nasubi, but apparently Nasubi is like the Japanese translation for eggplant. Yeah. And the reason his like nickname is eggplant 
<laughs> well, the first part is fucked up. The first part is because they said his head was shaped like yeah, a they, uh, and yeah, a little bit, the guys. second reason is because since bit. he was naked on television, the way that they were able to censor his genitals were by using an eggplant right. graphic that they controlled via joystick. Right. So whenever he walked, he could just they could move yeah. the eggplant mm-hmm. with him. I, I also find that hilarious. Mm-hmm. But regardless, uh, this <clears throat> Nasubi guy was able to do it. I think like after fifteen months. Yeah, he, and by by the way, that's try adjusting the society after that shit right no. fucking crazy. so he was able to do it and then he was surprised to find out that not only was he being filmed live the entire time uh because once he was able to finish the competition when he left his apartment he found out that he was in a studio audience and they were like cheering for him and shit like that and it took him by, like what the fuck uh they didn't tell him that at some point the show had become so popular that the tv network started live streaming his entire life experience 24 yeah, seven yeah, yeah. for the majority of the year. Mm-hmm. So every single thing that he was just doing was completely broadcast to people for a year long. And it's, it, it's crazy to me. I mean, it, it is, it is probably one of the most torturous things. Cause it's not only the mental of being locked in a room naked for a year. Yeah. It's everyone saw it. And now you're a so cel- like a m- celebrity, but also looked down upon Yeah, <laughs> to a certain extent. And then they had, let me look it up real quick because they had other like seasons or so of the show where they did other similarly, like yeah, ridiculous uh, just weird fucked up things. Yeah. And, uh, fucking, yeah, here it is. I just want to see. Yeah. Here's one. Uh, this was the crazy one to me. Fucking two comedians were put on a desert island with no food or a clue about where they were and were only told that their ordeal would finish if they built a raft and reached Tokyo. After their escape from the desert island, which took them four months, they were given a swan-shaped pedalo and were told to reach Tokyo with it and then go with the same pedalo from India to Indonesia. Fucking stupid, bro. This is their TV. This is what they're like. This is what we're gonna get people to do. It it is it is so outrageous. But I get it. It's so stupid. It's not worth it. Oh, here's a good one too. Uh, they had two people who they forced them to hitchhike from the Cape of Good Hope in South Africa to Nordcap in Norway. The two contestants were forbidden to use their travel money and thus face starvation, dehydration, and harsh weather conditions. At one point in the challenge, one of them collapsed in the Sahara Desert and had to be airlifted to a local hospital. How fucking nuts is that? Mm -hmm. But I wanted to leave what I thought would be your favorite for last because I actually thought it was kind of an interesting experiment for the show to do. So one of their last seasons or one of their last like well-known seasons of the show had three contestants. Mm-hmm. Each one of the contestants was a diehard fan of a different Japanese baseball team. Okay. So they would put them in a room that had nothing but a TV and a chair, essentially like that. And these people were locked in the, this room for like months. Okay. And what would happen is if their team won a game, they would be given food. Uh, and if uh, and they would get a little bit of light in the room, which would not only brighten their room experience, but the camera crew would be able to see a little bit more of their face, giving them more exposure from people who are watching the TV uh, show. I see. If your team lost the game, you were not fed and you were left in the dark. If your team went on a winning streak and was doing particularly well, the quality of your food would get better. The quality of the light in your room would get better and it would all end after a loss. And they did this for the entirety of like the season, baseball season, yeah. yeah. And then like at the end, whichever contestants team did the best got like a specific award because of their commitment to the team or whatever. But that would be kind of fucking crazy. Imagine being a Mets fan and being subjected to that, starving to death. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that'd be terrible. It's a be just uh, it's like what what month is it? July or I find I'm, I'm dying. Yeah, it's I'm dying of heat stroke and starvation. Well, I just found that fu- I found that yeah. show. I found that story. I, I knew about the sweepstakes guy. I didn't know about any of the no, other yeah, the ones. show. They, they eventually canceled of, it. I mean, but. it's like you know, it's like kind of like when people complain that Survivor isn't real. It's like you want them to do that. You want do we do we want them? that to do that? Which right. I want to segue into my boy Jordan Fringe, the video essayist, for watching every single season of Survivor U.S. 
Wow. And doing a 12 hour summary. That's about right. The first hour of which is like just like an overarching like video essay mm-hmm. about about Survivor and its impact on shout outs reality to, uh, TV. Shout outs to Ken, the Super Smash Brothers melee legend who was on I think like season 3 of Survivor. That's mm-hmm. a fun fact. Just like to throw That's that out. That's a pretty good there. fun fact. Yeah. You want to know another fun fact? What's another fun fact? Another wow. fun fact is that I was playing a game that I pre-ordered in January. Mm-hmm. You know what that game is? What is it? Is MLB The Show 24. Uh-huh. Does this have anything to do with Survivor? So, yes. Okay. No, it doesn't. Okay. So that's going to be a really short chapter of the Joystick okay. Show. Okay. I was watching Survivor. 30 seconds and then... <laughs> You had more to talk about with Survivor? No, I was just I just thought you were gonna go into a whole Survivor tangent. Oh, oh, whoa. Survivor. <laughs> Every country has Survivor, you know that? Yeah. Yeah. See, it's longer now. I hate Fucking Survivor. gotcha. So well, yeah. And will be the show. And will be the show. I was playing it, right? Yeah. And you get a lot more packs this year, which is like how you get players yeah, in like yeah, the yeah. big game mode. So now there's times where I just have like 40, 50. So I was just opening a bunch of them and I got a player that people pay like $200 to get. Oh, wow. And I just get them. So shout out to Mike Trout. Uh, I can sell them for 220K in game currency. Wow. Or I'll just I'll just keep them for now. That's fire. I just got I just got to be careful not to like lock them or anything. Because that happens where, like, you lock a player to, like, your collection, and, and then you now can't you can't sell them. Gotcha. So if I do that by accident, I'll lose a lot of money. Yeah. But then I have him. But then so. you have Mike Trout. But I still have him now. I have a guy named after point. a fish. How fun is that? Yeah. Uh, uh, the uh, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim, which have the dumbest name in baseball, which I kind of want to go on an additional rant about. Mm-hmm. Because... Uh, why do you need to have a city two names? Just be the Anaheim Angels. Yeah. In fact, they were the California Angels whole state they had the whole state that's crazy they should have just kept that shit yeah. i like that that's big you know what i mean the big state i kind of like that though when teams do something different mm-hmm. like golden state yeah. Woof. completely different look not even a fucking like a state or a city no, yeah it's the golden state the golden state like imagine if a team was just like the, with the, like the garden state something yeah. it's like you'd be like that kind of works it does it, does. it sounds works. good it's got a ring to that it kind of works also, in, in sports news, I'd just like to uh, make a mention that the Atlanta Hawks are currently about to lose to the Milwaukee Bucks, which normally I wouldn't care about, but mm-hmm. I'm particularly happy about because that means that the Brooklyn Nets get more and more of a chance. Realistically, I don't think they. It's not going to happen. I know that, but we can, we can, we can celebrate the little things. Celebrate. Right? We celebrate the small things. There's nothing wrong with that. There ain't nothing wrong with that at all. And another thing about it will be the show. Uh, as always, they add players from the infamous Negro Leagues, right? Uh-huh. Uh, they say that in the commercials. They say it a lot. They say it too much. You know? What, the Negro League? Yeah, like they really emphasize that shit. And I want to say, like, I was just thinking about it. Like, there's no, like, at what point is it not okay? Like what? Because it's it's the official name, right? Yeah, but it, if, it, there's no problem. With I it. know that's what it was called. It's was it actually called that, or was it called the Hard R League? I think it was called the. I don't. <laughs> I don't think it was that. I highly don't think it was that. Don't get me wrong. I think people, you know, people. I think people, people called. called I think that. people I'm, probably called it that. I'm, you know, I'm 100 percent sure that people were much worse. So they should say that. it on the commercial. No. <laughs> I don't think they're going for historical accuracy. I think, I think, I think, I think that Bobby, I think that they should go for historical accuracy. I think they're going to, get, I think, I think they they're need trying to, to get as many people to play. I the think game they as need possible. to add a cutscene in the game where I'm standing in a different part of the clubhouse. <laughs> Fucking the game would win an Oscar for that. Yeah, 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 yeah. They need to get Tarantino to direct MLB the show. I mean, they should just reenact 42. <laughs> you know? Yeah. They should reenact every scene from that, but in the game. In MLB the show. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Or re-reenact it. Man, I, fucking sports games are getting crazy now. They're getting... Ga- I want to play it with you, Loki. I want to play it with you right now. We got to download... Uh, the 2K just came out free for uh, oh. for PS Plus. Mm-hmm. We got to download that. We got to start, oh. start the rivalry up. Ooh. So you can shit on my face. Ooh. Just learn how to pick and roll, Bobby. In so game, in game. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, yes. Pick and roll. That, that Pick and roll. When you pick it, and then, then you roll, roll it. Mm-hmm. Real simple. Mm-hmm. Boogers. I know. I know sports. Mm-hmm. Sports, I know. Uh, 
I'm going through the fishbowl of topics that I could talk about in my head because mm-hmm. I'm I'm not I'm fucking exhausted and I did. Bobby's very pretty tired. Yes. I'm I'm very know, tired. I don't know if we've talked about this. I mean, I could talk about something cool I did this week. What you Similarly, do this week? Kind of like a similar vibe to what you did with the the Pete's candy store kind of thing. Okay. So my girlfriend is uh is awesome. Shout outs to her. But I, it's cool because I've never really been with somebody who's kind of similar in to me in a lot of aspects, but uh, specifically when it comes to like our career and our passions and our hobbies. Because she's okay. also a filmmaker, she's an actress, so mm-hmm. she has very similar uh, uh, hobbies and just overall ambitions that I do. Right. Correct. So, but one thing I will give her credit for is you know. One thing I'm also trying to give myself credit for is that, you know, I feel like Joystick is very like <laughs> stupid, right? Funny, but we put a lot of effort into yeah. it. A lot of work gets and put into it. And even then, a lot of like times, you, like, you talked about the Japanese thing. Like that wasn't a stupid topic, low key. That was no, a No, I'm not topic. saying that, but I, what I'm saying is like energy. Uh, the content that we produce is like mainly centered around comedy oh, and okay. lightheartedness and, mm-hmm. and stupidity, but with a fun twist. Mm-hmm. But what I'm saying is like, I think sometimes I take that and I kind of attribute it to the actual production value and the oh. editing. When in reality, it's a lot of work, you mm-hmm. know, and I, I have to give myself a little more credit for that. And what I'm getting to is my girlfriend is like way ahead of me in that step. So she has an LLC for her company. She's producing like short films and stuff like that. And part of it is she's very uh, sociable in that kind of uh, that industry or that like, you know, area of work. Mm -hmm. So one thing we did that was actually kind of cool was the first time I ever did it is I went to a, a creative artists mixer. In mm-hmm. Brooklyn, so it was just like a bunch of people that were there to support one of uh, her friend's short films. But okay. at the same time, it was like a fifteen dollar fifteen dollar fee, yeah. and you just talk to other artists, creators. There's free food, there's drinks, and they did like a little short film festival, which was pretty cool. Nice. So yeah, it was it was it was a dope vibe. Um, I'd love to shout out the movie, but it's not out yet. But I will when it does come out. Nice. Uh, but what I will say is, uh, you know what I'll do. Even though I, I don't know how much of an impact it's gonna have, I'll put the donation link in the in the the description below. That's nice. Let's help. Let's help uh, another fellow artist, guys. Mm-hmm. So check it out in the description below if you want to help out. Um, we need some short films for yeah, sure, we some short films. and we need some artist friends. Uh, I met some cool people, but I guess I just wanted to talk real quick about the short films that they did air. Okay. To just to clarify, they didn't have any anything really specifically to do with the people there. It was just more so the woman who directed the short film that was being uh, fundraised for at that event mm-hmm. uh, wanted to show off some other short films that were special to her that had been made in recency. Oh, but see. they were still really fantastic. So shout outs to the first one. It was called Bus Girl, a short film I think that was made in London, I want to say, and I think was actually nominated for a BAFTA. Okay. Really, really cool, really well shot. Thought it was really, really well done for a short film. Second one was a little artsy fartsy for my liking. Still very well put together, but it's just more of like a, a thematic idea, yeah. so to speak. I think I think that one was called uh, "The Lights Keep Me Keep The Light Keeps Me" or something like that. Something like that. I don't, don't remember exactly. Light keeps me going. Yeah. <laughs> and then the third one was really, really cool in my opinion. It was I think uh, a Nigerian queer film by uh, a Nigerian-born London filmmaker. I want to say. And she uh, made a film. It's called, oh, man, I want to say it's Masquerade. I'll, I'll definitely find it. And if I'm wrong, I'll, I'll put the correction here. But that one was really, really well well done. Just the, the cinematography, the editing was like, it, it was just one of those situations. It was funny because me and my girlfriend both left that event and we were going home and we were like, fuck, we are inspired as shit. Like she went home and started writing stuff. Mm-hmm. I, start, I came home, started doing stuff for Joystick, but it's just like one of those things where I'm excited because I'm in a, a part of my life where I could just fucking devote to making stuff. I mean, you already know we've written like two things for Joystick. We did a live stream the other day. I'm editing another video. I mean, uh, time to get to Joystick Prime, I'd like to Fuck call it. Fuck yeah, you know? That's what I'm talking is about. That, is that like what it, it's called? It, I mean, it's our prime in our individual lives too. Like yeah. in, in sports, it's like... 26 to 32 yeah 26 to 33 this is like, this is podcaster prime that's where you pop off yep. and then that and then after that is when your body starts breaking down exactly. you have some kids blah 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 uh-huh. all that nonsense the ankles get too tired for the podcast yeah there you go we can't sit the same uh, anymore yeah, if we have to sit like this <laughs> <laughs> every podcast is like uh, yeah, that's all. Uh, and like you're, you're trying to talk to me about a topic and i'm like the fucking Mets are 12 and 82. <laughs> it cuts to me and I'm asleep because my kid was up all night the last night. I'm just like, yeah, sorry, yeah. Jose was in my uh, bed. <laughs> sorry, Jose was in my bed and my kid broke my bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, my 
God. Where do we go from here, Dylan? God. What time is it? 3.30? Bro, we have been doing this podcast for like 32. 28 minutes. It feels a lot longer than that. Bro, we if we could go on for another eight minutes, that's all we need. That's all we need. That's a Think re- of the first thing that comes to mind. That's a really, 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 really long time. Eight minutes? We could stretch eight minutes out. Honestly, I kind of want to go on a rant. Okay. Can I go on a rant? Of course you can. I can go on a rant. All right. You know about you know about John F. Kennedy? I'm aware, yes. You know about John F. Kennedy? You know who shot John F. Kennedy? I believe it was Lee Harvey Oswald. Yes. Yeah. Anyone who will tell you that he did not shoot him mm-hmm. is an idiot. Wow. They, because they re- they did. They literally have reenacted it many times. Uh, people say that the bullet doesn't make any sense, you know, because the it magic like, bullet it hits the... like multiple people yeah. and it like curves or whatever. But if you look at like the car and where they're sitting, the f- the the like the passenger seat and the back seat aren't behind each other. Mm-hmm. They're like that. Okay. So it's like it makes sense. It may it makes perfect sense. Got you. There's no second thing. The most you could say. Is that like he lived in Russia for a year? Uh-huh. So there's like, oh, it was the Cold War, you know? Yeah, yeah. He he had connections to Cuba. Okay. But he was actually just sucked. <laughs> okay. And the reason why I say this is because like I did research about this. I can tell because uh, I was watching like a YouTuber do a whole video about it, and this guy like he knew his stuff, but he also was just like kind of mean to Lee Harvey Oswald, and sure enough. You murder the president of the United States, and sure enough, yeah, we're gonna be fucking mean to You're you. You're gonna get some shit. But like, just the way he's like the most professional. He's like a he's like an eight. He's like a, a high school history teacher or yeah, something. Yeah. But he does like all like these like video essays and stuff. And he's just talking, and he's like, Lee Harvey Oswald was actually a fucking loser. This piece you know? of shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't liked by anybody. This fucking incel. His wife didn't love him. He did like he's like going on. I'm like, damn, bro, the man's dead. The man was dead. You just said like, and then he gets shot. Like then, I mean, like which is why like yeah, by I, fucking Jack Ruby. Jack Ruby, who by the way was, wore the sickest suit you've well, ever seen in your fucking life. Am I right? Jack, he dressed up to kill the. Do you know, do you know about Oswald. Jack Ruby? Do you know who he was? He's like a mobster or something. He shit, was right? a mobster and strip club. He owned several clubs, <laughs> bars, and strip clubs. He said, "Not my president." He <laughs> said. He and, and literally, he just happened to be there and said, "This is my fucking time." Yeah, yeah, yeah. He then there was no premeditation. He like he it just like set him off. You know what I mean? He's like, "I'm gonna get my city back." Yeah, fuck yeah, fuck and yeah. He probably did. Yeah, he did. But I kind of wish someone shot him, <laughs> and then we could care about. It. We could keep this chain reaction it was just, of it news was just headlines. Like a crazy fucking chain. It's like the seventies. Oh, <laughs> People are still getting shot. They're like the guy who has shot this guy is now in it's hiding. Really, yeah. He's hiding because he doesn't want to get shot. He's and, gonna get shot. Oh, and, they uh, found him. Oh, he got yeah. shot, guys. <laughs> They were they were bringing him out and they fucking shot. Oh, and that guy got shot as they were that bringing would, that guy. That out. would be a hysterical sketch. I'm about to cut that shit out so we can write it and nobody steals it. Oh, uh, we don't have the budget for that. Oh, fuck yeah! Are you kidding me? We have the budget for everything. Do we? Yep. Okay. 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 Do anything. I also have another idea for a sketch, and I feel comfortable saying it because I I I it would be hard for it to be like make it like tasteful okay but it's a sketch where you dress up in your dad's army outfit uh-huh like some and, stolen yeah yeah yeah, yeah yeah but it's marine like, marine but it's like quick cuts of you just saying shit about the military that isn't true but you're saying it with confidence you know it's he's like Dracula yeah yeah, yeah yeah he's like he's like yeah you know it's like on your six yeah no one even fucking says that you know we, we, we made that up we made that up we made that up Fucking! Uh, I just also before we end the podcast wanted to make a mention of the recent live stream we did on the channel. Joey and I played some Fortnite, some mm. fork knife. We played it for two hours. Uh, I got a W. That was pretty mm-hmm. hype. A little ten kill. Joey win. would have had a W, but he kind of gets distracted. Joey a little bit. tried a little bit, but he was entertaining people for what for what it's worth. Mm-hmm. But I just wanted to bring it up, not to not only to brag and be like, look at us, we fucking make live streams. But to thank the people who came out because it actually ended up being one of the more successful things that we've done in a while. Uh, I believe the stats came out to like uh, 16 different viewers who came in and watched. 
like eight mm-hmm. concurrent, mm-hmm. meaning we had eight people at one time who were all like talking. Yeah, it was, it was pretty active. I thought it was cool that even though it was Joey and I on live stream, you and Jerry were still kind of there, like doing your your other comedic duties, keeping the conversation mm-hmm. along. So it was really cool. So shout out to everybody who supported that. And we've learned a lot about not just how to make them better, but uh, what we want to do with them in the future. So you can stay tuned for lots more live streams mm-hmm. coming very, very soon, like probably this week. So shout out to Ooh. that. And you can also stay tuned for an edited form of the live stream that I also hope to get out very, very soon. Mm-hmm. Shout outs to Joey for time stamping every fucking sentence we said during that live stream. He's a good boy. He is a good boy. He's a good boy. He does his job. He's a good boy. Uh, fucking with that being said, I mean, we can start uh, swinging it over to jam and yam of this show. Indeed. Honestly I don't speaking, Dylan, remember my name. I was just going to say that usually I have, uh, weeks every now and then mm-hmm. I'll have weeks where like the jam is very hard for me to pick, you know, cause there's a couple of songs that I like mm-hmm. Th- this one. It's like legitimately between five that oh, I have like eight right now. Yeah. It's really difficult for me. So you're going to go first. Mm-hmm. Oh no. Uh-huh. I don't remember. I don't remember my name on Too my bad. song. I don't remember the name. So now I have to go first? Uh, I'm going to stall for maybe about three or four or five seconds. But you know what? I'm going to go with this song. Fuck it. I'm going to go with Slip by Kenny Mason featuring Toro y Moi, which is a very interesting combo. Uh, The sample of the song is another song. I can't put my finger on it, but it's definitely a song I've heard before, like a Mm -hmm. pop song. Uh, Tor Imoa doesn't really make much of an appearance, but it's fun. Uh, He actually has a concert tonight, not Tor Imoa, but Kenny Mason. Oh, cool. That's pretty cool. Uh, Yeah, a song's a vibe. I like when he raps over. No, yeah, I love Kenny Mason. He has one of my favorite songs. Actually, on one of the jam volumes is a Kenny Mason song, Mm -hmm. so I forgot what it's called. Uh, The one I'm thinking of? I really want to play ball. Yeah, play ball. Mm-hmm. It is. It's a jam. It's a fucking yeah. jam. Uh, my jam of the week is going to go to The Rake. Can't complain in, par- in parentheses by Rio Vaz. Rio Vaz. Uh, it's just like a really fun hyper pop. Hyper pop? Hyper pop kind of Jersey club song. And the vocals are seriously catchy. So okay. shout out. It's a super, super fun dancey song. Rio Vaz. And uh, that's how I like it. That's the way, uh-huh, uh-huh, podcasting, uh-huh, uh-huh. Thanks for watching the Joystick Show as I stretch this one out real quick because, like I mentioned, four hours of sleep on a shitty bed, but that's going to get fixed pretty soon. What if the quality of my sleep affects how much better this channel gets? That's probably true already. Wouldn't that be cool? I mean... Got this new fancy bed and now fucking 12 videos a week or some stupid shit like that. <laughs> we well, yes, top 10 people. Like, it's like you turn into Mr. Beast. Yeah. You're like, you fire all of us. You hire yeah. people from fucking. Exactly. I, I, I start an office somewhere in New York City. Uh, thanks for watching the Joystick Show. We super appreciate you. Thank you for stopping by. It'd be cool if you could subscribe to the channel. It'd also be cool if you could like this episode of the Joystick Show. Real chill one today. You know, we don't have the boys here, but hopefully we'll get that fixed. Obviously, mm-hmm. it is Easter weekend that we're recording this, and we are a bunch of good Catholic boys. Uh, so some of us are doing things while other uh, others of us are not doing things. Us. I ate meat yesterday. <laughs> I'm a rebel. Uh, but other than that, thanks for joining. Thanks for again for the support for the live stream. Stay tuned for that. And also stay tuned for lots more uploads coming to the channel because literally there's like three videos in the oven as we speak. And I'm just going to rapid fire release them. Uh, one, two, three. One, two, three. I've been Bobby. I've been Dylan. And I'm going to go upstairs and <clears throat> set Jose on fire. And he has risen. <laughs>